Okay, here we are out in the field. Got plenty of room around us. We're a bit sheltered by some trees all the way around the oval. So find somewhere that uh, isn't too windy. And obviously with that shelter, it's only gonna last as long as the height of the trees. So if you're flying above that height, uh, you're gonna start getting into a bit more turbulent sort of air. Um, making sure that you know where your local airports are or any um, sort of local uh, regulations. So check out some some maps and just make sure you're a, a fair radius, maybe four or five k's away from any um, airfields or air bases so that you don't get in trouble for flying over top of them. Um, and we're all set up and ready to go. Last couple of checks that we want to do is uh, we can do a, a range check. So um, holding the trainer switch down, uh, you should be able to walk about 50, 100 meters away and still be able to control the plane with the trainer switch down. And basically that's just um, sending out a signal that's not as powerful between the plane and the controller so that uh, you can you can be sure that when you're up in the air a long way away you're going to have plenty of range and and we should be able to be line of sight but at the moment we're going to stay within the perimeter of this oval uh, we shouldn't have any problems with range so last few things before we go we want to have um, the ailerons even if anything we're going to have torque from the motor uh, spinning um, clockwise and therefore the plane might want to roll a little bit to the right. So if anything, we might want to have this left hand aileron down a little bit more, just so it balances out the plane. And when you first fly it, you want to be ready to set up the digital trims a little bit. So that if it is rolling, you can pull the digital trim over and flatten it out. And uh, when we were in the workshop, remember how we talked about these nylon um, clevises? We just want to make sure that we've got the plane set up manually the best that we can so that uh, we've got nice flat control services and we've used the manual um, components like that that thread here to trim it out rather than using all of our digital trim up before we even start flying so um, I think we're fairly ready to go uh, got our other ones at least fairly even and if anything I might have uh, the left one down a little bit more so it's not rolling and same thing with the elevator if anything I'd have it so that the plane wants to trim up rather than nose dive into the ground and my rudder's really nice and straight down the side there so final check can check that we've got throttle rudder elevator and you can see how much movement that's giving it just in the breeze that we've got here with us today and aileron rolling from side to side and yes we've got it going the right way so I'm not going to be confused once we get up in the air so here we go, you can either use a mate to help you launch and I might do that. So if we just zoom out and get the, the field in here. No, actually I'll, I'll go by myself. So if you've got a mate that can help you out, uh, we want to be throwing the plane not too hard, just gently up into any breeze, so not with the breeze, gently up into any breeze, maybe about 50-75% throttle to start with. And you're aiming to try and get the plane to uh, fly, sort of to be stable when it's maybe about 60-70% throttle rather than trimming up or trimming down. Um, so we want a nice stable flight once we're up there. And here we go, I guess. So hit some throttle and uh, cross our fingers. That's flying really nicely. I've got about 50% throttle there. Come back inside the camera. Plenty of thrust at 50% throttle. Really nice and stable. At least for a depth run plane from 2D. We don't have a whole lot of battery life. I'm going to bring that into land. And to bring that into land, I want to be landing into the wind. I'm going to go behind me and then come back up and drop the throttle right down, coming close, nice and uh, steady to the ground. And hopefully... Not a bad landing. So that was the first flight for about uh, six or eight months since we were doing the videos last time and uh, we didn't even push the uh, prop off, which was lucky, so we're ready to go again, and we're gonna have a quick go at buddy boxing with a, with a bloke that hasn't done much flying yet.
So we're gonna have a quick go at uh, body, buddy boxing and this is the first time I've ever done any buddy boxing. This is one of the first times Steve's ever flown, especially for this plane. So we've got the little 3.5 mil mono jack and this is the Spectrum adapter. And I've got a, uh, a stereo 3.5 mil jack going into the DX5. Now we talked about this in another video. I think if you had two DX, um, sorry, you need that one. So the 3.5 into the 6i and the mono into the 5e uh, need to play around back in the workshop if you want to get this right maybe the first time. I'm just going to link this in under there, Steve, so under that bar just so that it's not wanting to pull out and you can do the same. So just pop up under there so if we walk away from each other it's not coming out. Now I've got the master controller. If I uh, take the, uh, pull the trainer, let go of the trainer, I'm back into control. If I'm pulling the, the trainer up, then Hixie's allowed to sort of have a bit of a fly. So I'm gonna take it off so Hixie can um, throw the plane up for me. I'm gonna be in control. Once I'm up in the air and I feel stable and there's not too much wind, I'm gonna pass it over to him to have a bit of a go. And if it looks like he's gonna hit the ground, I'll hopefully take over and uh, fix up any problems. So do you wanna hang on to this in one hand as well? So you're ready to go. And uh, Hang on, okay. And just, now I'll just check my controls again. I'm pretty good, and we'll just check yours. So we're just checking the buddy box is working. I've got the trainer port up. Uh, Hicks is in the control, and as soon as I let go, he's lost control, and I'm, I'm back in. So, hopefully we don't have a crash. Here we go. Okay, so I've got about 60% throttle, so if you start with 60% throttle, we've got a fair bit of wind at the moment. Uh, and sort of copy my motions, I guess, a little bit. Whoa. Okay, I'm gonna give you a bit of a go up here. Ready? More throttle. Come back towards the trees again. So bank it a little bit. I took over. Alright. You got the control again. Yeah, you're in control. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Probably got a little bit too much wind out here for a first time flying. But he's doing a pretty good job for his first go and uh, we've been able to save the plane from going back to the workshop a couple of times already. Yep, yours again. Nice. Nice. Here you go. Bring it back round this way. Out, that's it. Back towards that tree. Get it out of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yours oh, again. Yours again. Yours again. Yeah. I want to land it. Or... I want to land it, yeah. Okay, we're finished for a little while. We're going to have a bit of a break, so I'm going to take over and hopefully be able to land this the second time without too many problems. So, run away. <laughs> banking it back round. Got my uh, throttle right down. Coming down close to the ground and oh, look, at that. look at that. There we are for a safe landing and turn off the controller. So that's Good. probably the end of our videos for now. Good luck. Uh, please upload any videos that you've got with some successful flying and any modifications that you might do, whether you put a bit of a, dr a drop module on it or some wheels, anything like that. Put them down in the video response so we can all have a look and see what you're doing. So good luck and uh, we'd like to see your results.